All right, let's go ahead and get started. Welcome, 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 family. Thank you for joining the MPY general body meeting, November 21st. Uh, I truly am your chair. I believe that building better communities starts with having a voice. And that voice starts, in my opinion, with the MPU in the city, with the city of Atlanta. So I thank you for being a active and valued member of this community. One of the things that we need to do is go over some brief housekeeping guidelines. Please stay muted to prevent background noise. Also, if you wish to speak, use the raise hand feature that is located in the participants section or the reaction section of Zoom. You'll be called to the floor in the order in which you are presented. If you choose to speak while somebody else is speaking, then there is a chance that you'll be muted because it is a violation of Robert's rule of order that requires one person to be on the floor at one time. If you're calling from a phone, I always get this messed up, Gloria, help me out. Please use the star six to no, sir. raise. Star Star nine is to call from the phone. Star six to mute. Star six to unmute. Star six to mute and unmute. Star nine to raise your hand. So you type star nine to raise your hand. Both the minutes and the agenda is located at mpy.org. And uh, also, if you are a city representative, please enter your information into the chat. We're gonna be calling the first responders first as usual. Please limit, we have a, a, a very lengthy agenda because we have to do elections. So try to limit speaking to approximately two minutes um, at the most. With that being said, we're gonna go ahead and move forward with the agenda. I'd like to solicit approval of the minutes. The Motion minutes approved. Uh, uh, motion to approve by Jimmy. Can I get a second? Second. Second by Gloria. The yes. minutes is located in the mpy.org site. Trying to bring it up now. The minutes is located on the mpy.org site. If you go to the second section, then you'll see October 22 notes. Click on that. I'm charging my, uh, plugging on my charger. All right. Uh, all those, we're going to do by uh, uh, unanimous consent. Are there anybody? By the voice vote, uh, Chairman, just uh, if, if any are in opposition. If there are any in opposition, please speak at this time by voice to the current minutes. All right, seeing none, motion passed by unanimous consent. We're gonna move forward with the approval of the agenda. We have a couple of edits. Let me click on the current agenda. So we have a couple of edits. We were able to defer all voting matters that's currently in the agenda due to uh, elections. So uh, as well as defer the presentation, which is not on the agenda, but it, that's been deferred as well. There was a presentation for Invest Atlanta. We had, we had to defer that as well. Uh, Gloria, you call to the floor. Yes, sir. We also added Bob uh, Boris as one of the uh, ratifying appointees. 
Uh, yeah, Bob Morris is also one of the ratifying appointees that we'd like to amend in the agenda for the um, uh, that, that line. With that being said, with those amendments, I would like to solicit a motion. Motion to approve as amended. Uh, second by Chris McCord. Motion by Rebecca Robinson, seconded by Chris McCord. If you have any objections to the current agenda, please speak at this time. The current amended agenda. Seeing none, the motion is passed by unanimous consent. We're gonna go ahead and move forward for two reports by the city department representatives. We're gonna start with, I think I saw Captain Pettis with the police department online. We call to the floor. Hey, good evening. I'm just trying to, how do I get out of your screen? Okay, there we go. All right. I am going to tell you guys about the crime uh, in October as compared to uh, the September crime. Okay, so we had zero homicides in either month. In the aggravated assault category, we had seven ag assaults in October compared to seven in September. Of those seven, uh, four of them were DV related. Uh, with two arrests being made on scene. In the robbery category, we had five as compared to three in September. And one of those was a domestic violence related robbery. We had two burglaries in October compared to 10 in September. So obviously uh, we had a big win there. And one category that we track in burglaries is any renovated uh, property, vacant house types or any construction uh, related burglaries. And we did have one home that was under construction that was burglarized. Uh, in the auto theft category, we had five in October compared to two in September. Uh, one of those was a Kia. I'm sure you guys have heard by now by either uh, from Major Ricker or myself about the, uh, the ease in stealing Kias and Hyundais. So we only had one out of the five and two vehicles were left running. Um, one was warming up and the other somebody was standing outside having a conversation. Uh, the theft from vehicle. Now here we took a big hit with 17 in October compared to two in September. Um, and a few categories I like to break down is uh, people are back to stealing uh, catalytic converters, which accounted for two of our 17. Uh, two tags were stolen from vehicles. Uh, that was another two. And then a category, uh, which I like to call visually accessible, meaning exactly what it sounds like. Somebody left uh, something just too appetizing to leave behind in plain view. Um, usually construct or not construction, but electronic equipment uh, such as laptops and cell phones make up that category. And then the non larceny meaning all other thefts, not from vehicles. We had 15 in October compared to 12 in September. Uh, we only saw one porch pirate theft, uh, which is really low. Uh, we took a big hit in AC units that are outside of structures. Of course, uh, people steal those and then rip the copper out of those. Uh, and we had one construction site that a larceny uh, occurred within. So total part one crimes, we had 36 uh, compared to 51. So a huge win from October to September. And that is my report, um, unless there are any questions for me. Is there I any have... qu questions Sorry. for Jennifer about it? Please use the raise hand feature at this time. Oh, uh, Heather, you paused it before. Um, can you, how many of the, uh, non larceny, or sorry, the vehicle theft that was visually accessible. What was that number? Uh, let me pull that back up. Uh, uh, so the larceny from vehicles where things were in plain view were six of the 17. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Tina, you talking to the floor? Hello. 
Uh, Tina Arnold, Tina Arnold, your call to the floor. Hello, can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, um, I'm seeing a larger number of people I don't know walking around. Um, and I'm wondering where are these people coming from and why are we seeing so many all of a sudden? I mean, like we were out doing yard work and some guy walking around talking about, y'all got any food? You know, and I'm like, who are you? And the guys that, okay, I'm, if you're from around here, you know some of the regular homeless people. They didn't even know him because I had two of them in my yard working. And I'm like, who is he? And they're like, well, you don't know. I've never seen him before. Um, who are these people? Where are they coming from? And um, what do we need to do about it? Because it just seems like we're getting a large, especially on my side. I don't know about anybody else's side. I live over here and I'm seeing a lot of them. Where's that, ma'am? Can you give me a, a an, an intersection? Yeah. So I live on Gould Street, um, close to Richmond Avenue. And of course, Richmond Avenue, we're seeing you know, quite a few. I saw a few today that I've never seen before. And um, they look like homeless people. Um, you know, I mean, like clothes hanging off, you know, stuff, checking trash cans, right. you know, food and, and, you know, it's like, who is this? And then like some new guy is apparently he's kind of crazy and he's been down there beating up on prostitutes on Richmond. Um, what is going on? I'm, I'm going to make a note of this as we speak. Uh, one possible explanation, explanation may be that uh, we worked with code enforcement to uh, board up a few of those vacant houses along that uh, Richmond, uh, Gould, Lathea area. So those folks yeah. might have been spending more time indoors in vacant houses squatting, and now they don't have that. They've been denied access to those. I, I really don't have an answer other than that. I can ask. So I mean, yeah. I mean, but like I said, the people that I know have been homeless around here, and, you know, knowing everybody don't know these people. So they're not even coming out of those houses that you're talking about. Um, and I, and thank you for closing some of those up. I appreciate that. But yeah, these are people unknown to the neighborhood. Um, that, that is uh, new information to me, ma'am. I put my information in the chat. If you would send me your contact information, uh, via email, I will try to get an answer for you and see if there's any crime interdiction that we need to uh, accomplish in that arena. And I will get back with you. I just have to do some research because I wasn't aware of that, to be honest. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Gloria, you called to the floor. Yeah. Well, thanks, uh, uh, Captain Pettis. Are you able to tell us whether there's any special attention at all being um, directed at that Oak No Ghoul area. And, and I, are you referring to the uh, drug houses? No, you know, I don't mean to blindside you. I'll give it later on in the report. Uh, Major Ricker has been uh, kind of one-on-one -on -one with many of us doing daily patrols himself, but just wanted to know if you were, you know, if you had firsthand knowledge of any augmented, uh, uh, augmented work in that ghoul. Yeah, there you go. I can tell you that our crime suppression unit has been assigned almost exclusively to that area. So what that means is those are about 10 officers that are assigned to zone three, but they do not answer 911 calls. They are uh, solely proactive in their efforts. And uh, we think a lot of those folks that y'all see walking around there looking like zombies are drug abusers. And there are a few houses that we're targeting for uh, narcotic search warrants. I can tell you that for sure. Appreciate that. All right. Thank you, uh, Captain Pettis, for keeping us safe. You're welcome. Thank you guys for having me again. My contact information is in the chat. Uh, I'm most responsive and uh, most articulate via email. So please uh, don't hesitate to reach out to me. And I appreciate you guys. Have a good night. All right. You too. All right, we're going to go ahead and move forward, uh, calling the fire department to the floor. Is uh, I think I did not see the uh, battalion chief online. All right, moving forward, um, calling the suite 
Officer Lawrence to the floor. Hello, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm gonna hold you long. I know we got a large agenda tonight. Um, just want to give the weekly updates. Um, being next week, being a holiday week, you will have um, one day delay in service. So typically in this area, your collection days are either Thursday or Fridays. So you just will get collected the next following day. So place the stop at the curb as as normal. Um, and the collection will happen the next day. And then the next week, everything will go back to normal. Um, this evening, I really just wanted to get on to introduce, we have a new suite manager, um, Ms. Jefferson that's working with the team now. I just wanted to introduce her to MPUY um, so you all can get a little familiar with her. Ms. Ebony. Hi, Hi. good evening, everyone. Um, I am Ebony Jefferson and I am the new suite manager. So I just would like to say good evening to each of you. Um, if you have any questions, of course, we're here to assist in any way that we can. Um, of course, um, you can have my phone number. Um, that number is 470-304-6757 and I am available uh, via phone or email as well. So nice to meet everyone. Look forward to working with you. Thank you so much. Uh, could you repeat the number one more time, Ms. Jefferson? Uh, it's uh, six. I mean, uh, four seven zero three zero four six seven five seven. All right. That's Thank my you. cell phone number. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, and what? Sorry, one more quick thing, Mr. Nelly. Yep. Um, I just wanted to put out. Um, so we, um, being that we are available, um, by email and phone. Um, but when cases are being submitted, please go through 311. So just in case if I'm out of the office, we can make sure um, anybody within the team is able to um, get that um, case started for you all. So just go through the system, submit a case to 311. We'll get that taken care of between 24 and 72 hours. It may not be completely resolved, but it will be an initiation of investigation will be started. So it may not be completed fully within the 72 hours. It's just to start. I just wanted to put that out there again. Um, but other than that, I don't have anything else. I'm trying to keep it short because you all have a long agenda tonight. But if anybody have anything for us, and we'll also stand by for questions in the chat. Okay. Oh, we do have one question in the chat. If you can respond back to Tina Hunter. Oh, um, okay. Uh, okay. The burnt down houses is being set for demolish um, okay. on Charleston Avenue. Yes, mm -hmm. I'm familiar with that. One and three. Yeah, um, three. So with that, one and three. So with that, what has to happen is uh, it's been forwarded to APD code enforcement. They'll actually first have to reach out to the owners before we are allowed to go on the private property because it's not on the right of way. It's on private property. So they have to do the due diligence with contacting their owner. And then if it's not, then they'll get with our department and we'll send a crew on that to do it. But we just can't go on the property and just start cleaning. So it's a process. Um, yeah, yes, it's a Arnold, you're talking about one and three or five, because one has one of them has been torn down already through APD. Okay, three, five, and seven. But it's on the property though, right? Yeah. So, but I, I'll um, go over tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, I'll go over tomorrow and I'll check on it and I'll get back with you, Ms. Arnold. Check that. And I can shoot you over um Tina's information or she can just send to you, email it to you. Okay, great, great. Email will be great. Um moving forward. Uh Lisa Henry from Commissioner Arrington's office, you're called to the floor. Good evening, this is Mitsa Henry with Commissioner Arrington's office. Um, just have a few things for you tonight. Um, hopefully everyone is doing well and you have a happy holiday, safe and have holiday season. Um, early voting will take place starting um, November 26th on a Saturday. Uh, the information and locations have been posted to your uh, Facebook page 
And I can also post the flyer here. Um, if I can add attachments, I'll make sure I, I, um, I attach it here and post a link as well. Uh, Commissioner Arrington is gearing up for his dad, daughter's dolls plus son's event. Uh, we are collecting toys on behalf of incarcerated fathers within Fulton County Jail. We have sent out to the letters to um, the forms to um, Sheriff Labatt. He's distributing those, um, the opt-in um, forms to the fathers. Um, and then once we receive those back, we'll contact the families and uh, they'll pick up the toys at two private locations. So if you're um, interested in donating toys, for children between the ages of one through 12. Uh, you can drop it off at Oak Hill Family Center, uh, South Annex, or Fulton County Government Center uh, downtown. And um, I believe I have the final flyer for that as well. And I'll make sure I, I post it um, as well. Uh, do you have any questions or concerns for Commissioner? Is there any questions or concern for Mr. Arrington's office? All right, seeing none. Thank you for everything that you're doing for Commissioner Arrington's office. No problem. I'll make sure I place my information in the chat and feel free to contact me anytime. Appreciate it. Uh, and welcome, Ebony. I forgot to mention. <laughs> welcome, Ebony Jefferson, for to, into MPY. We appreciate everything that you're doing with the sweet team. All right, moving forward. Is there any other uh, officials, city officials, before we move into elected officials? Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Oh, 311. Yes, sir. All right. Good evening. My name is Timothy Cannon, and I'm a support services coordinator for ATL 311, which is the non emergency call center for the city of Atlanta. And it's the number you would dial to report things like water main breaks, questions about your water bill, code violations, and other general information. Our call center is open from 7 a.m. through 7 p.m. You can reach us by dialing 311 inside of the city limits of Atlanta, or you can dial our full number, which is 404-546-0311. I put out other information inside the chat. And does anyone have any questions or concerns? Is there any questions, please use the raise hand feature at this time. All right, seeing none. Um, all right, seeing none, we're gonna go ahead and move forward. Thank you for everything that you're doing for 311. Yes, sir. You guys have a good night. All right, you too. Uh, is there any other city officials? Uh, I don't see any in the chat. All right, moving forward, I'm going to go ahead and call uh, Mina Tarabi to the for Council Member Lewis office to the floor. Thank you so much. Um, it is good to be on NPUI um, because our full council actually ended a little early today, so I get to jump on here. Um, just a couple of things, uh, you know, we're continuously doing uh, turkey drives and I'll send all those informations in the chat um, leading up to Thanksgiving and then leading up to the Christmas holiday. Um, other than that, really excited to see a lot of NPUI projects on the TSPLOS implementation plan. Um, you know, being in phase one, whether that be the Lakewood Path Trail or um, some other small or minor projects, uh, very excited to see that and excited to see all the implementation get done very, very soon. Um, other than that, you know, just continuing to work on infrastructure um, with sidewalks stop signs, um, street repavements, and uh, speed calming devices. So if you do know any in your neighborhood, um, please feel free to send them to me. Um, other than that, I'm just gonna open up the floor to any questions if anyone has any. Um, and Troy, I don't know if this is your last meeting, but it ha thank you so much for everything um, that you did when we were transitioning over um, to, to this role and into this office. You were such a tremendous help, thank you. 
Oh, no, the pleasure is all mine. Um, Jimmy, your call to the floor. Hey, good evening. Uh, Mina, I was just following up, wanted to see if there were any uh, developments to uh, stopping the truck and trailer parking over at the, uh, I guess, the, the mouth of 166. Mm -hmm. Uh, any, any developments on that? Yeah, so as you'll see that the, it'll get cleaned up and then they'll come right back. Um, so we have asked the uh, Georgia uh, State Police to put up a sign and then therefore um, our police officers can enforce that. Um, things that the state move a little slower than we would like, um, but they, as you know, we're calling it in. And then as soon as that happens, um, they'll come and, you know, ticket them but we're trying to get that sign up. So we're still working on that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Gloria, you call to the floor. Yeah, hey, Mina, thanks for, thanks for being here. Um, this is that continuous ask. I know uh, council member uh, Lewis said that high on the priority is that exit right there at 166 where it comes to uh, the stoplight there at Macon and Lakewood Way. But I was just wanting to put another plug in for continuing that um, stretch right up Lakewood Way, in part because when traffic gets backed up on 7585, they all jump off and take two, two thoroughfares at 166, either Lakewood Avenue or Lakewood Way to Pryor. So if you guys take a ride down there, I think you'll find that it's it's been the site of some serious accidents because as, um, as vehicles come on upon one another, they're unaware of the potholes and suddenly somebody's stuck in a pothole and then there's... So I, I know I've told you the story before. I just want to keep it on your radar. <laughs> well, Miss Gloria, I just want to um, add to that. So that actually has been uh, one of the projects that we moved from um, a different phase of the TS Plus implementation to the first phase. And there was a couple of dollars actually that were left over from Councilwoman Shepherd's um, TS Plus 1.0 because another project just wasn't happening. So we actually are using those funds to pave. Um, Lakewood Way and sorry, forgot the other street's name for a second, just blank. But we're using that to repave it all the way from Macon Drive all the way down uh, to the amphitheater and all of that. Mm -hmm. So um, we are working on that. And the RFP, I believe, for that has already been sent out. Hopefully, we will start getting some movement on that very, very soon. Nice. Thank you, Nina. Nina, thank you. Uh, Jacob, you caught the floor. Uh, thanks, Troy. Um, sorry, guys, it, bear me with me a little bit. I, I had some dental work done today, so I'm a, I might be a little hard to hear me or understand me. Uh, but Mina, I was wondering if uh, the intersection of Milton Avenue and Lakewood Avenue would happen to be on your agenda for any type of uh, roundabout uh, additions or anything like that. It's something that we've kind of been talking about over in Chosewood for quite some time. And it's a, it's a very dangerous intersection. A lot of illegal turns there. Uh, it's safety for bicyclers, uh, pedestrians, and all those things. So I was wondering if that might be on, on your agenda. Um, so unfortunately, uh, that is not in District 12. But as a resident, that is definitely on my mind. And I believe that um, Council Member Winston's office can probably answer this question better than I can since that is not in District 12. Okay, thank you, Mina, appreciate it. Uh, Ken, your call to the floor. Oh, uh, you're muted. Thank you, Troy. Hi, Mina. Hey, hey. Can you hear me? Hey. Yes, I can hear you. Um, I actually had the uh, pleasure of uh, bumping into uh, Councilman Lewis uh, a few weeks back when we had our last city council uh, meeting and we were honoring some of our uh, council people uh, for their uh, years of service. And I kind of mentioned to him, and I know that my vice president has been reaching out to your office regarding uh, some of the prevailing issues uh with arthur langford jr park uh mm -hmm. you know we've had a vicious cycle with the city repetitively coming painting over graffiti for months and months now uh and it's just a waste of money uh we've actually had some dialogue with your office about removing that skateboard park 
from our part um, and putting something more 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 practical there. And um, um, and my vice president Jared Billings has been reaching out via email to your office. And according to him, he hasn't gotten any response from your office regarding that. And I just want to uh, see if we can look into that beyond this meeting and perhaps reach out to him regarding that. Definitely. I know that me and Jared met once um, a couple months ago, and um, I apologize if that may have fell through the cracks. I know that was uh, on top of our conversation with Parts and Rex earlier this month. Um, I'll be happy to uh, get an update tomorrow morning and put both of y'all on an email and see what's going on with that. I know um, one of the bigger conversations was um, adding some more cameras to uh, Arthur Langford junior park um to you know catch these things or you know we're working with them but let me get an update and then i'll email y'all tomorrow morning thank you so much yep. and shout out to ken for getting the street lights put up along bowen circle it has been three years and he's also, been persistent yeah so sorry sorry to um Sorry to interrupt you, Troy, but if y'all, um, so there were a couple of neighborhoods that had requested um, street um, street lights, um, and we had a very good conversation, a very productive conversation at that with Georgia Power, and they are going to be starting to put up the lights uh, in December, so like um, around the areas, and then if you have any more lights that you know are out, or you, um, it's just dark there, please feel free to email me and we'll add that to the list so they can get started on installing them right away. Great, thank you. All right, moving forward. Uh, appreciate everything that, that you and Councilmember Lewis is doing for our city. Thank you. My pleasure. All right, moving on. Is there any other elected officials on the call? All right, seeing none, we're gonna go ahead and move forward to committee reports. Uh, try to limit to one minute, if you can, for committee reports. And that way we can go ahead and move forward into the elections. Uh, we will start with the zoning committee. That's Jacob and Bob. This is Bob. We're in the car, so I'm sorry. I, I really have no updates for tonight. Jacob, do you have anything around Chosewood? Uh, I, I don't have any uh, real updates, except, I mean, obviously we do have, um, you know, the, the same story for Chosewood, but we also have a few that are, um, you know, coming online in other locations as well. So um, if anybody, I'll put my information in the chat. If anybody wants to reach out to either uh, Bob or myself, uh, please feel free to reach out to us and we would be happy to help you with any questions that you might have regarding zoning changes or uh, SAPs, variances, those types of things. Yeah, and one thing to know, we did mention, sent the message over to Councilperson Lewis and Winston's office around SAPs and being more, that making sure that the NPU is more vocal. Uh, specifically, there's one, requirement that's in municipal code that uh, should allow SAPs to be sent directly to mail to the NPU, but it has been going unnoticed or either they've been sending it to the wrong address uh, because I haven't received them, nor has any of the chairs. Uh, so we reached out to the legislative office to see if we can make sure there's some verification of, of the address that SAPs go to for the MPU. So we're trying to get that in legislation. Um, so that way it don't fall through the cracks and they're just sending a SAP to a generic PO box somewhere that nobody ever knows of. <laughs> uh, because by law, they're supposed to send SAPs, but it doesn't say where. Um, so it may have failed through the cracks because we haven't been seeing, it, seeing much SAPs over the last year. I'd like you to pull over on the side. Um, I mean, you. Uh, all right, uh, Heather, you call to the floor. I know we've been tracking December from the city for the bridge to be repaired. Do we know if that's still on track? So last thing I heard was December. 
uh, we'll need to get a, a response. I'll reach out or me or whoever the next chair is, we'll reach out to GDOT. We do have a contact, the engineer that's over our district and for the Georgia Department of Transportation, we can reach out to them uh, and see if we can get an update. But they did say, it looks like it's almost there. I rolled past it. It looks like it's almost there. <laughs> I'm hopeful. So hopefully, I'm just hope, so hopefully it's it's going to be a good Okay, cool. Thank you. No um, so with that being said, we're, like, we're going to uh, Jacob, your hand raised. You're the floor. Yeah, I was just going to say, they, they are almost finished. I've seen them out there working. They've, they've already went through and spread out the hay straw and everything on the outside perimeters to help with the erosion and things, which is generally a sign that they are done moving dirt and things. And so uh, I, I do believe that let's keep our fingers crossed that they will be done in December. So that, that was it. Thank you, Joy. Yep, no problem. Um, that was also the report for transportation, unless Jeff Depp, if he's on the line. See, and uh, we're still working through with transportation. We're still working through the Lakewood Trail. So having more uh, pedestrian trails in our community. And we have gotten the, the funds for T-SPLOS as well as some other funds. So we just need to push our legislative body as well as uh, the PATH Foundation to get an engineer from the Department of Trans Atlanta Department of Transportation to do their assessment. So we need to get, that's our next step is to figure out what uh, engineer to come in and you know, look at our tra potential trail for Lakewood Trail. Um, we, that would be a task for our, our next chairperson to continue that. Uh, moving forward is uh, Gloria called to the floor with public safety. Yes, sir. We, we've already heard from um, Captain Pettis, but what I'd like to do is embellish on what uh, Major Ricker had put out, I guess, about 10 days ago. There's more uh, there's more of a cry in uh, the eastern portion of Lakewood Heights, which uh, there are 10 communities that make up zone, uh, 10 communities that make up NPUY and many NPUs that make up zone three. But there has been and is still currently based on uh, based on based on essentially the eastern portion of Lakewood Heights being called the epicenter of what now has us listed as, you know, one of the most serious communities to govern police, to govern uh, criminal activity. Let me just give you the data that he gave. He said, what, what major, what Captain Pettis said earlier is that unlike any other zone, all beat officers are being prohibited from responding to any calls other than in, in zone three which apparently there's reciprocity amongst them. Uh, there are 300, he said that there were nine, these are the datas for the last three months. There've been 218 arrests in zone three and 1600 traffic stop. Um, most recently they've added a bike patrol, which is almost limited to Saturday and was able to make arrests. Apparently the criminals believe that because they're on bicycle, you can't really stop me. But what they don't know is that they can they can a radio ahead, and I believe the stop was made on Milton. There was an arrest with both guns and contraband, and this stop was made pursuant to these individuals leaving, uh, uh, what is it, uh, 1634 Lakewood Avenue. Uh, that's really the substance of it, uh, other than there's some amount that we should always consider ourselves for personal responsibility. Know your neighbors. Know, know whether or not your neighbor is poised to move. There's been a number of uh, U-Haul trucks that have pulled up emptied houses and no one, you know, no one knew enough to know that their neighbors were not poised to move. We also, at the LRB, one of the things that have been recommended is these licensees, two of them which have deferred from tonight's meeting, that these licensees be asked, uh, contingent upon our approval, that they be asked to integrate their exterior cameras with that of APD because oftentimes our calls are involved with issues that are going on those premises. I think that's really uh, that's really it pretty much. Uh, they're still down 400 officers. They're looking, you know, looking for support. And in the meantime, we're as a neighborhood watch going to act as the fourth, the third prong of support for APD. Are there any All right. questions? All right, thank you. 
All right, we're gonna go ahead and move forward to uh, the Lakewood Finance. Jimmy or Kanika, your call to the floor. This is Kanika. I don't have an update to share. I was unable to attend the last meeting. Okay, sounds good. Uh, Jimmy, do you have an update? No, Troy, I, I missed last meeting as well. I had uh, some things going on, so I didn't, I didn't make last meeting as well. Okay. Cool. Well, we did receive a, a nomination from the board. Um, so we'll go through that in a shortly. All right, moving forward to parts, belt line, and environment. Dr. Rebecca Robinson, you're called to the floor. Hey, good evening. Um, so just briefly, we're going to start back up at South Bend doing some stewardish, uh, stewardship sessions starting in January. We're doing them all pretty much Sunday afternoon. So I will post the dates, uh, hopefully with the MPU with Lakewood Heights and up at some local venues. So uh, we should have the date set up for the next 10 months. Uh, they're all again Sunday afternoon. So I hope as many people can make it out as possible. Um, and I'll leave my information in the chat in case you wanna contact me about more information. All right, thank you. Uh, moving on forward, uh, we're gonna, gonna call Monique Nunley, Education Committee. Your call to the floor. Monique Nunnally for the education. Hey, sorry. Yeah. Hey guys, um, I am sharing um, updates. Uh, so right now our big, big uh, push was the CCRPI data was released from the state of Georgia. So please play in this tool. This is our baseline data. It wasn't a ton of people um, it wasn't a ton of students who tested, but as you all know, our community is uh, one that needs a lot of support and lean in and hold on for And so right now our big push is making sure that people are aware of this data with CSRPI and the um, APS is going to share in the next meeting in December 5th meeting, this uh, data, they should be reporting out the data for all of their schools. So while we're celebrating great graduation rates, pretty much in our community, we're talking about 80 to 90% of our students who are not proficient in reading, math, and science, okay? So I just want you to kind of be clear on what we're up against in our neighborhood, in our schools. When you look at this data, you'll see like 1% proficient, 6% proficient. We're talking about single digits. So I, if I don't leave you with nothing else, please play in this data, this is baseline data, so we can start building a accountability with our partner operators, as well as with our APS board about what they're doing to ensure accountability post pandemic, because they don't have grades this year. So please make sure you're paying attention to that. The second thing is in December 5th meeting at the school board, uh, APS is going to list most likely approve uh, seven set the disposal of 17 property assets. Um, those probably won't go on the market until 2023 quarter one, based on what I listened to in the board retreat, you can listen to the board retreat on Facebook, on Atlanta Public Schools Facebook, if you want to hear their plans for these buildings that are highly concentrated in southwest and southeast Atlanta, there are 17 properties, okay, and so be cognizant of these public assets that are about to come down, I uh, went, the committee, education committee went to advocate for additional community input on what happens to these prom these properties, but we were not successful in getting the board to change their position on committee, committee input being required uh, prior to sale. They just said they'll seek input. So be cognizant that seek input could be a number of things, not necessarily a requirement as we see with our MPU structure and development and uh, new developments in our community. Um, the third thing is we donated uh, about 200 Christmas hats 
to Parkinson Elementary. And that's really great. They're having an event on December 15th. Um, I've reached out to all of our MPY schools and not received any phone calls back about how we can support them. So I just want to name that I'm trying to serve any way I can. But if you want to get involved with Perkinson Elementary and their school store, they've uh, been able to give checks on the 1st and the 15th and kids have been purchasing things and some kids are saving up for a flat screen TV. So I just want to share that the education committee is doing some really great work. At our last meeting, we discussed in great length a charter school that's interested in getting a letter of support, a tapestry charter, and uh, we'll defer them until next meeting to have a vote to see if we would like to share a letter of support. And I'll uh, defer to our chair at that time of how we would like to proceed with um, talking through uh, what the committee discussed in this December meeting uh, due to limited time today. So those are my three big things. Pay attention, pay attention to the CCRPI data. That's our, that's our report card for how our schools are doing, where our tax dollars are going. And then uh, this big uh, property asset disposal that will be coming down the pipe in Q1 for 2023. Pay attention because these empty buildings are in our neighborhood and we need the board to be accountable to us. And then of course, how do we um, show up for our kids? Parkinson Elementary is having a, uh, Christmas gathering, December 15th at 6 p.m. They would love for us to join them. Thanks. All right, thank you. I did see, we're gonna, we're gonna hold the hands to the end of the conversations. Uh, we're gonna call the, another committee to the floor. Let me pull up my, uh, Lakewood Oversight. I think Yolanda couldn't make it. So essentially she said there's not much to report. Uh, the main item is what they're going to be working on over the next couple of months is winterizing because everything is wrapping up with Lakewood Amphitheater and they're winterizing the equipment. And that is what they are working on now. Uh, the last piece, let's see, we got special projects with Nicole. Your call to the floor. Uh, Mr. Chair, pardon. I just wanted to give you an update from that amphitheater that I was given, I should have given, that starting Friday, there will be 30 days of a light show, the Christmas light show there at the um, amphitheater, the venue directly in front of Fair Street. And um, Major Ricker is concerned about traffic and conge congestion. They're expecting tens of thousands of people to converge on the amphitheater, the parking lot area, which will become a winter wonderland. I should have That'd mentioned nice. Okay, okay. Nice in part, but the concern is regulating traffic. And I think that's probably something we can visit with them later. Yeah, we do. Yeah, I appreciate for noting that. So we do need to discuss uh, traffic plans over the next 30 days. Um, uh, Nicole, your call to the floor. Yeah, thank you. Um, so we are working on Together 1000, which is our web development for uh, select neighborhoods within MPUI. Uh, we are should be on track to close out in December uh, without any hiccups. Uh, we do also have flyers that will be uh, mailers that will be sent out to uh, focusing on select neighborhoods that need more of an outreach by mail versus by web. Um, we are looking for uh, some better communication with High Point as they have shifted some of their leadership. So um, if you're part of High Point, please uh, make sure to make that a note to them um, because there's a, once they shift over, there's just kind of that lull in between the two different leaderships. So um, otherwise, there's not much else to update. And I will jot that note down. I live in High Point. I'll jot that note down. <laughs> I do know the point of contact that you can reach out to. I'll talk to you offline about it. Let's see if I have our direct email. Um, with that being said, we're going to open the floor for any questions. I think I saw one. Yeah. Uh, Gloria, across the floor. Yeah, real quick, it's to Monique. Um, I thought I heard recently that uh, 335 Sautel had been recommended by the consultants for sale or lease. Was that accurate what I had heard previously? Yes, I just I just posted it in the I just posted the slide deck in the chat. I think it's slide nine. I have to double check. But you can look at the entire list of the 17 properties they're recommending at the December meeting. And then they won't most likely vote to put them up on market 
in Q1 and we just got to pay attention because they don't have to ask us. They don't have to tell us or inform us because it's not a part of the policy. Uh, they didn't add that um, update as requested. But I put the slide deck in there. We'll just have to be really diligent and staying on top of the board during Q1 and talking to our board, our APS board members. But they will vote on it December 5th um, at, at the seven o'clock meeting. Thank you. All right, moving forward, we're going to go ahead. We're going to, I know we have matters of voting coming up next. Uh, however, I just want to go ahead and take care of the new business so that we can just do everything. The remaining piece of the meeting will be elections. So there's two ratifications. Um, Nikki Garcia for the Lakewood Finance Committee. Uh, Nikki has been part of the Lakewood Heights community for, since I've been part of the NPU, she's attended almost every meeting. Um, Nikki, are you online? Yes, I am. Did you want Thank to speak you. briefly? Well, um, I've been in Lakewood Heights now nine years and uh, not knowing anybody in the area, the first thing I did was to join whatever committees were available to join so I can get to meet my neighbors. And I've been a voting member ever since. So thank you, it's been my pleasure. And yep. I look forward to working with the uh, committee. All right. Um, is there any, this been came from recommendation from both the committee and uh, for me. So I wanted to see if there's any, I wanted to get a vote of ratification for her uh, before I depart as chair. Um, <laughs> is there any, I'm gonna open up the floor for, well, can I get a motion first? Move to approve, motion. Russell. Motion approved by Russell. Uh, Seconded by Chris McCord. Seconded by Chris McCord. Uh, we're going to open the floor briefly for discussion. Is there any discussion around this? I see Gloria, your hand is raised. No, it's no inadvertent. It's inadvertent. All right. All right. Um, any questions? Seeing none. We'll go ahead and close out discussion and move forward for a vote of approval. All those in favor, please use the raise hand feature at this time. In order to be a voting member, you must have attended three out of the last 12 calendar months. If you're unsure, we did post the voting members in the chat. Um, so we did post a link of voting members in the chat that's also at the bottom of the chat now. Oops, nope. That was Nikki. I just posted one thing. Uh, yep, posted one. Approved is 17. So we have 17 approvals. Um, I'm going to lower the hands now. All those who wish to not approve please use the raise hand feature at this time, which to deny the motion. Zero in opposition. All right, all those who wish to abstain, please use the raise hand feature at this time. All right, motion carries. Um, Thank you. Please note that 1600. Uh, <laughs> please note that um, look at the uh, candidates spreadsheet to make sure you're voting member as well for those. Mr. Mr. Chair, would you also make me host so I can better see the tally? Apparently it wasn't coming up. I was just doing it by hand. Um, yeah. All right, moving forward to uh, ratification of uh, Gloria Hawkins' win. This has been approved by both the executive committee and 
my nomination. She currently sits as a public safety chairperson, so it makes complete sense to make her APD working advisory group. This is a recommendation to APAP, um, as she also sits as vice chair, vice uh, president of APAP as well. Um, but this is a recommendation from our MPU to the APAP. APAP then uh, makes the recommendation for the APD working advisory group. That's, that's one thing to note. Um, other than that, I'd like to solicit a motion. Nice. Motion to approve. Second. Yes, yeah, second Chris McCourt or. That was me. <laughs> second by Nikki. Yeah. I, I, I didn't catch the motion. Okay. Motion by Nicole. Uh, all those in favor? Oh, I'd like to open the floor briefly for discussion. My bad, uh, Bob. I'm going to open the floor briefly for discussion. Is there any um, discussions? Yep. Uh, Ian, you're called to the floor, or Bob, or is it just votes? Uh, sorry, no, I was just a vote. Ooh. Okay. Ten as well, a vote. All right. Uh, closing. Is there any? Is there any uh, items for discussion at this time? All right. Seeing none, we will go ahead and move forward to a vote. All those who are in favor, please use the raise hand feature at this time. Your current tally. In order to be a voting member, you must have attended three out of the last calendar year. We also paste, posted the um, voting members in the chat. So you can check that list and then just send us a message if you feel like there's an error. Mr. Chair, rolling tally is 26. Rolling tally is 26. I'm going to go ahead and close that out. Close. All those who wish to deny, please use the raise hand feature at this time. None in opposition. Seeing none. Um, all those who we have one message. Let me check that. Uh, all those who wish to abstain, please use the raise hand feature at this time. None showing in abstention. All right. Motion carries. All right, moving forward. Uh, we do have a ratification of Bob. Um, actually, I do have another. I forgot. Um, we do have a ratification of Bob uh, Morris as well for the uh, Beltline TADAC. What? So, so moved. Beltline Tax Allocation District Advisory Committee, TADAC. Um, this is a recommendation to APAP, and then APAP makes a recommendation to the city council. The city council ratifies. Um, all those, uh, I'd like to open the floor for discussion. Oh, I'd like to solicit a motion. So moved, Mr. Uh, Chair. Yes, yeah, second, Chris McCord. Moved by Gloria, second by Chris McCord. Um, all those who, uh, we'd like to close the floor discussion. Excuse me, I was reading in the comments. Mr. Chair, may I help a little bit in explaining what those are, if you don't mind, would that be helpful? Yep, yes, yep, we're in discussion. Yes. You, got, you got the floor. Yep. Yeah, with just with the prior nomination for the Police Working Advisory Group, just as for TADAC, which is a long acronym for Tax Allocation District something, something, something. These are appointments 
from APAB. APAB has authorized, I believe, 15 advisory, advisory uh, working, uh, police working advisory groups. Also authorized, I think, 15 slots to TADAC. And the turnover has been high and they've been unable to make quorum. So I think, uh, again, TADAC, all of these are appointments coming through the Atlanta Planning Advisory Board. And I guess, Mr. Chair, if I could say for you, if there's others interested, I think there's anxious. Yeah, I do them. have one more. I, I, I saw Alira's name and she mentioned interest. So I'm, I'm going to make the recommendation yeah. to Nicole at, or whoever, uh, or whoever's the chairperson, maybe it's uh, Paul, um, and see who actually is going to, and then just do it from there. Because I'm no longer going to be chair. And I forgot, I meant, I, I saw Alira's name. And I'm like, oh, yeah, she has, she has first interest as well. But um, but yeah, we'll we'll make that call later on. Um, so we're going to move forward. Is there any other items for discussions? Bob, your, Bob, your call to the floor. Yes, yeah, th thank you, Troy. I just wanted to make a, a note that during the last executive committee meeting that Heather had also volunteered to, to work on that same board. I don't know if she... Oh, yeah, she did. Just, okay. We'll, just to make sure you're aware of that. That is true. So we'll make we'll make a note and um, discuss in our next executive committee meeting. And we can recommend as many people as we want, as long as APAP is okay with it. So um, there are plenty of vacancies. <laughs> um, so moving forward, we're going to close out discussion and move forward a vote. All those in favor, please use the raise hand feature this time. Please check the, I did see a note that Nikki, you said that you was known as a city, but you're a resident. So please disregard. You can consider yourself a resident. It was just an uh, error on our end. Mr. Chair, the tally is currently at 18. 18? Yes, sir. We're going to close here. And any of those who wish to deny, please use the raise hand feature at this time. Mr. Chair, none showing in opposition. None showing in opposition. All those who wish to abstain, please use the raise hand feature at this time. None showing in abstention. All right, uh, seeing none, we are going to motion carries. <laughs> motion carries. All right, we're moving straight into. We're gonna. I'm gonna go in abdicate. Well, I am no longer serving as in the executive function on the executive team. Per our bylaws, if when elections occur we are to abdicate our seat as presiding officer and pass it to Anna Johnson. However, I am not serving in executive function. So I would like to see if there are any opposition to me presiding over or shall we just continue on with Anna Johnson? Please use the raise hand feature at this time to, to say any comments towards that. Is there any opposition to me presiding over? All right, Chris said turn it over. So we're going to turn it over to Anna Johnson. Anna Johnson, you are now the presiding officer. All right. Um, good evening, everyone. I'm going to um, maybe stumble through this a little bit, but um, I just wanted to first read the election criteria for tonight, um, and then we can get started from there. 
So there are seven elected officer positions for MPUY. Those are the chairperson, vice chairperson, secretary, um, secretary for membership, treasurer, parliamentarian, and sergeant at arms. And um, there's a description of each of those posi positions in the bylaws. Um, to be a voting member, you must be 18 years of age or older, um, possess a primary place of residence uh, within the boundaries of NPUY, or be a representative that owns non-residential property or has a place of business within the boundaries of NPUY. Um, and you, in order to be a voting member, you must also have attended three meetings within the past 12 months. Um, to be eligible um, for an executive op officer position, you must have attended four meetings within the um, current 12 month period, have not exceeded four consecutive terms and possess a primary place of residence within the boundaries of NPUY. Um, now I'm gonna read through the rules and regulations. Uh, no more than one officer shall be elected for members of the same family or household, nor shall any member hold more than one office at any time. The current chairperson shall abdicate his or her position to the assigned NPUY planner from the city's um, Department of City Planning, and he or she shall preside over the election of the new officers. That's why I'm presiding currently. Um, nominations for officers shall be taken from the floor and um, and or from an ad hoc nominating committee. The winner of the election for each office shall be the person who receives the highest number of votes of eligible members of the general um, constituency of NPUY. The term of each officer commences immediately up upon the certification of the election results by the presiding officer. Um, and then if you recall in the, the previous amendment, the recent amendment to the bylaw, so starting next November, um, the, the term will actually go from, the terms will go from January 1st to December 31st, um, instead of how they are now where it ends in um, November or after this meeting. Um, are there any questions about the criteria that I just read through? Okay. Um, so now, we, um, we can call candidates um, from the floor if you would like to um, add your name to the list of candidates um, for elected officer positions, um, you are called to the floor. Well, how do we call to the floor? We're sitting here looking at the boxes of individuals. Where's the floor? Um, I think it would be useful if we had a PowerPoint of who's running for each office to start. Okay, I can read the list of names of who's running for each office. Anna, am I more understanding that you were asking for soliciting nominations. That's, is that what you were more narrowly asking? Yes, and then I can read through the, um, the list of candidates. Um, I did not see anyone raise their hand to solicit a nomination. Um, I do see a hand raised. Shall I, sh oh. Your chair. Shall, I, shall I share my screen to show the current candidates or? Are you did you want to do that? Um, if you could, that would be great. I have several documents open right now, but I can share if you need. Uh, President, can you potentially show the image that you text out or emailed out earlier today to help with the um connection for us to see who is on the slate at this time? Can you see my screen? You can see it, Trey. Chris, I think you just shared it.
Okay, so um, one more time, I'll call again if there's any nominees um, from the floor and you can raise your hand. Okay, I do not see any. Um, so in that case, we can move forward. Um, each candidate will have two minutes to speak for um, their role. Um, and if time permits, if they don't use all of their two minutes, we will um, ask a question. What are you going to do for the next year to, oops, so sorry, I lost my script here. Um, what are you going to do for the next year to enhance the NPU? Um, again, each candidate is limited to two minutes for each um, to speak towards their role. And um, after they're done speaking, I will then call for a vote for each one. So with that, we can go ahead and get started with um, the chairperson nominees. Um, Paul McMurray, would you like to speak? And let me get my timer out here. One second. All right, Paul, let me know when you're ready and I'll start the timer. Okay, I'm ready to start. All righty. Hello, MPY, this is Paul McMurray. I've been a resident of this area, MPU for 40 years. I was an MPU chairman for 13. As you have witnessed in the last several years, I have been on the executive committee and have toiled in the background trying to maybe if they would claim, allow me to say mentor our, our current leadership. I, I hope that's not too strong a word for it. But uh, uh, I um, always try to be respectful to everybody and try to give the knowledge I have, uh, even though it may be humbling, <laughs> it, it, really. But what I'd like to see in the future is um, a recognition of the various development plans that, that are available in, in each community, we have the Lake of LCI, we have the Southside Redevelopment Plan, we have the Children's Park Redevelopment Plan, we have the South Atlanta de Development Plan. Every issue that comes in should, should be balanced against what is stated in those plans. A lot of them have to do with the single family core, which I am an unequivocal su supporter. It's an essential feature of every development plan in this um, uh, MPU. Secondly, I, I would like to look to deindustrialize the Jonesboro corridor. This is the reason why we have to, we have too too much traffic. The next thing I would like to do is to um, recognize the Lakewood Lake as part of the headwaters of the South River and to incorporate it into the um, South River watershed such that it connects to the South River forest. We're at just over two minutes, Paul, if you could, um, if you wanted to say any closing words. Uh, just that I, you know, I have a lot of experience. Some people don't like me hear me say that too much, but um, I, I was a part of all these things. And now that I'm at the end of my maybe life, I'd like to close thing, say things out as your MP chair. Okay, thank you, Paul. Um, so we will now open the vote to um, eligible voting members. Um, use the raise hand feature in Zoom to vote or if you're on the phone, um, so we only heard from one candidate. Was there another candidate? Oh, I'm so sorry. Yes. Um, the second candidate is Nicole Weiswasser. 
I think and I will start my timer now. So I'm currently part of Joseph Parks Leadership. I've been involved in the neighborhood for a few years now. Um, actively the Secretary of Joseph Park Neighborhood Association, the Secretary of Joseph Park CDC, and your MPUI ad hoc for a special committee's chair. So in my neighborhood, I strive to be someone that is always available to our members. I organize community engagement events, push to improve policies, and I'm overtly organized. And recently, with a few members of our friends at Chosen Park, we successfully submitted our Chosen Park's first state grant to improve our local park. So even though I'm not part of Chosen Park, uh, Friends of Chosen Park's committee, I've always found that when you're in leadership, transparency and working well with other leadership is how we move mountains, or in our case, we're gonna build a new park entrance. Um, I'm someone that likes to take charge, so I'm happy to uh, be the voice in the room, and I'm committed to continuing the progress that we've been making over the past few years in MPUI. So I wanna share my enthusiasm, my energy, and the knowledge that I have with on an MPUI level. Um, but I also wanna learn from our community and work with everyone to overcome our obstacles, especially those that are unique to South Atlanta. So I wanna be here to listen to our community and bring new insight and intuitive uh, solutions as an MPUI chair. Okay, and we do still have about 30 seconds or so if there's anything you wanted to add or speak more to how um, um, you could enhance the NPU. Yeah, so part of the issues that I've come across is lack of communication between our neighborhoods. While we all know somebody in another neighborhood, um, our leadership doesn't have um, regular meetings in order to uh, get insight or to um, learn about best practices or issues that other communities are having. So I wanted to do, um, whether they're bi-monthly or quarterly meetings, so that way our communities or different neighborhoods within MPUI can come together and discuss their, their topics that they need um, guidance or want to soundboard off of our other leadership committees. Thank you, Nicole. Thank okay. You. Um, we will now open the vote and I will call each candidate one at a time and then open the vote um, for each one. And um, Mr. Chair, please let me know if there's a different way you would like me to take that vote since um, you all will be helping me count the, the raised hands. Um, so first, the first candidate is Paul McMurray. Um, to vote for Paul, please raise your hand now. Um, if we're on the phone, how do we vote? You um, press star nine. Okay, thank you. Okay, it looks like. You know, it was Bob Morris' hands not up, and I only want to vote. It looks like um, I'm seeing eight hands raised, um, but I think on the host side, you can see the exact number. So. Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. That's correct, Madam Chair. Uh, eight hands are currently raised. And the... No, but, uh, but doesn't the phone have two people on it? That is correct. Uh, could the 404213 uh, identify yourself so they would know that you're a voting member again? and who all is on the call. 404-213-2103. Please identify so we know that you are a voting member. They may be on mute and don't know how to get off um, while on the on the phone. So if maybe just if anyone knows, they'll come in. 
I just invited them to unmute, which should allow them to have a screen to do that. Hopefully. I'm gonna check my I don't know if they will get the notification if they're on the phone. Um, was it star six? Yeah, please use star six to unmute. unmute. That's right, star six to mute and unmute. But star nine is to raise their hand. So somehow they've raised their hand. It looks like it, if I'm seeing correctly. Um, we will, I will cross check. Go ahead and move forward, um, Anna, Madam Chair, okay. and I cross check it with my database. Okay. The database is showing that it's Shantae Press, just from what I'm seeing. Okay. Shantae Press is a voting member. Um, and I see there's a hand still raised. I'm not sure if that was from the voter, if there's a question. I cleared all reactions after the vote. So it would be a question. Oh, oh just lower. okay. 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 Um, now um, for Nicole Weisswasser, I will open the vote if you would like to vote for Nicole please raise your hand um, by using the raise hand feature in Zoom or pressing star nine if you're on the phone. Okay. It looks like the votes have stopped coming in, so I will close the vote. I see there are two votes in the chat, and then I'm, I'm counting 20 votes um, in Zoom, so 22 total. Is that correct, Mr. Chair? I believe it should be 21. That is correct, it should be 21. Okay. And that includes the two in the chat? Yes. It... Okay, so that vote is closed and we can clear the, the hands. Uh, abstentions? Uh, okay, yes. Um, if you would like to abstain from um, voting for the chairperson, please raise your hand or press star nine if you're on the phone. There's an ineligible voter on the list right now. Russell, unfortunately, you're not eligible to vote. I apologize. I apologize for having to tell you. Okay, and I apologize that this is my first time doing this and I'm stumbling through. Um, okay. If I may, if I may interrupt just, just one second. I just want to make sure that I don't confuse people either. I had I had my hand raised and I noted that there were two votes in the chat. I, I just want to make sure that it didn't get counted as three. So there will be my hand raised and there'll be one more in the chat for the future for the future calls. Yeah, well, that's why we say 21 instead of 22. Okay, okay. thank you. I just I didn't want to mislead people. Thank you. That makes sense. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, so now we will move to um, hear from our candidates for vice chair. Um, I will go one by one down the list and um, it looks like we have three candidates. Again, each candidate will have two minutes to speak to their role. And um, uh, I will set a timer for each one. So Heather Graybill, you are up first. And whenever um, you're I'm ready, sorry. I'll start. Really, 
Anna, really quickly, can you share the final results for the recording so that we all are clear on who yes. uh, won each slate? Sure. Do you, and yes. Um, so for the chairperson position, um, Paul McMurray had eight votes, Nicole Weiswasser had 21 votes, and there were um, zero votes to abstain. And congratulations, Nicole. Okay, um, so Heather, when, whenever you're ready to speak um, for the vice chair role. Perfect, thanks. Um, so hey everyone, my name is Heather Graybill. A little bit about me, I was born and raised outside of Atlanta, moved into the city 10 years ago and moved to Lakewood Heights two years ago. I've served as the MPUI secretary the past year and I'm the upcoming secretary for Lakewood Heights. However, I can do a lot more than take great notes, uh, which is why I am running for vice chair. So I work in supply chain and operations. I am extremely well organized, skilled in planning events and organizing large projects. As our neighborhood continues to grow, a well organized community is going to be even more important, whether that's um, you know, dealing with incoming large residential units or the continued growth of the Beltline, I think it's going to be really important that we're making sure everyone's voices are being heard in the community, not just a select few at the top. In this role, I hope to expand access to the knowledge of what's going on in our community and also facilitate more opportunities for all community members to voice their opinions and weigh in on the changes that are going to impact our neighborhood for decades to come. So with that, thank you. And I think you're on mute. <laughs> Thanks. Um, you still have about 55 seconds left if you wanted to speak to how you would enhance okay. the interview or you can say anything else you would like to. Cool, yeah. So I think in terms of enhancing the MPU, I'd love to bridge the gaps between neighborhoods. Um, similar to what Nicole said, we were actually talking um, at a previous meeting, but bridging all of those different neighborhoods. So I think NPUY currently is very heavily represented by Lakewood and Chosewood. And I wanna make sure that we're getting every community involved regardless of who's in the leadership team. So whether that's monthly meetings, quarterly meetings, and then also I wanna to work to do more hybrid and in-person meetings. So I organized the October hybrid meeting we had, looking to do more of that so we can get more people from the community involved. Um, and yeah, just wanna make sure we're not being an echo chamber within our group, but maybe inviting additional elected officials into these conversations and just having really intentional conversations going forward. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Okay, um, Gloria, would you like to speak next? Yeah, thanks, Anna. <clears throat> Heather's right. It's a very exciting time to be in MPUI in the Southeast Quadrant. Uh, we were the stepchildren for many, many years. We're no longer. Why? The Beltline has made a big difference as to what, what growth will take place. It's very exciting. It's so exciting. And I can tell you that my engagement on the city level through APAB, the Atlanta Planning Advisory Board, gives me a front seat to being able to discuss with other MPUs what the uh, pros, the cons, the issues I was major, a part of a major group last year that pushed back legislation that would have gutted the autonomy of communities like Lakewood. No voice in, uh, in, in zone, or at least a minimal voice in zoning issues. Um, just kind of, uh, again, it, it's an exciting time. I've been uh, parla I've been acting as parliamentarian on this board for the last year, which meant I had a chance to sit front and center to uh, a very a great executive team. Uh, Troy in the lead. And a part of the role as a parliamentarian is that you have a close working relationship with the chair, that you understand the issues as the chair is going to put forth on the nightly on the monthly meeting. And in understanding those issues, you can help guide not only the conversation, but you can also keep it on point. Um, I do, I, I am a lawyer by trade. I have been for the last few decades. I do a lot of pro bono work in the communities. I've had a chance to touch all 10 of the communities that make up NPUI as a, uh, as, as a court appointed attorney in the True and Intervention C Project. I, um, I look forward to what's happening. Uh, again, I, I came to Lakewood at a very depressed time where uh, fortunately my husband and I were able to, uh, we got a, a foreclosure 
a foreclosure whereby no one else wanted to live, but we were not afraid of people who were struggling. Because as I've said before, most of us are one paycheck away from homelessness. What are the things that I'm excited about taking place? I'm excited about seeing what purpose built and any other entity that's gonna come in and change the conditions of the schools in the Southeast Quadrant. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm excited about what we're seeing at APS what will happen to the, all the schools that sit in the Southeast Quadrant that currently diminishes the quality of our lives. Um, uh, and, and, and I think I heard earlier, I'm, I'm too poised to listen. I'm poised to bring insight. I'm poised to keep growing with the community that I've come to love. Thank you. Okay, and then our um, third candidate is Paul McMurray. Oh, Paul, I think you're still on mute. I think I said pretty much in the president's what I, I would like to continue to do as vice president, especially with, with, with the mentoring role. But I, I neglected to say what I really wanted to say initially was that uh, I am a person who believes in inclusion. And uh, when I was in my various roles, I sought people to include people in the process that were not usually representative, like in the case of the Go Puffs situation. Um, also, um, when uh, Joyland had a uh, liquor license in 2018, uh, their organization wasn't as strong as it is now, and I the, in the process of doing the liquor license, I, I brought the Joyland community to actually a meeting and the realization that where, where they, they were going and then um, under Mr. Akbar have um, pushed forward with, with their own, the, the neighborhood organization. So thing is, one thing is, is, is I know people even when they aren't at meetings. So I can find them and, and, and give them a voice. That's all I've say. Okay, thank you to um, all three of our candidates. And um, I will once again call each candidate um, one by one and we will, if, um, for the voting members, you can raise your hand for the candidate you would like to vote for. Okay, um, so first um, for Heather Graybill, if you would like to vote for Heather, please use the raise hand feature or um, dial star nine if you're on your phone. Ooh, excuse me. Give a few more seconds. Um, anyone else would like to raise their hand? Okay, it looks like the voting has stopped. Um, so for Heather, I see five votes. Um, Mr. Chair, is that consistent with what you're seeing? And let me open the chat. I do. That is that is consistent. Okay, and I don't see anything in the chat. That is correct. Okay, we will close the vote for Heather. Now um, I will open the vote for Gloria Hawkins. Win. If you would like to vote for Gloria, please use the raise hand feature or press star nine if you're on your phone.
again, I'll give a few more seconds. And I'm seeing um, 23 votes plus one in the chat, so 24 total. I'm seeing the same. Okay, we will close the vote for Gloria. Thank you. Okay. And um, now open the vote for Paul McMurray. If you would like to vote for Paul, please raise your hand or dial star nine. We have a couple more seconds. Okay, I am seeing two votes for Paul, and I don't see any in the chat. And then finally, if you would like to abstain from voting for the vice chairperson, please raise your hand. Okay. Zero abstain. Okay, congratulations, Gloria, for our new vice chair. We will now move to the position of um, secretary. One order. Could you repeat the tally? Yes. For the recording. Absolutely. Yep. Um, so for um, the vice person, um, vice chairperson, total votes, um, Heather received five votes. Gloria received 24 votes. Paul received two votes. And there are zero votes to abstain. Thank you. Troy, Troy Anna, is it improper to say thank you to all the folks out yes, there? Yes, it's improper. <laughs> we'll say thank you after. <laughs> Should put that in the chat, right? <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry. Okay, we will move to um, the secretary position. We have two candidates, Heather Graybill and Paul McMurray. Um, let me get my timer back going. Um, Heather, if you would like to speak to this role um, of secretary, you are invited to speak now. Well, thank you, Anna. I'll keep it really brief since you guys just heard me for two minutes. That being said, obviously I've been the acting secretary this past year for uh, NPUY and I'm the upcoming secretary for Lakewood Heights. I type a mean meet meeting notes um, outside of that, love getting involved in the community. Um, and I think that my different organizational skills are actually something that's really important in the secretary role, making sure we keep all our ducks in order and have the ability to like manage email inbox, all of those fun things. So yeah, thank you guys. Thank you, Heather. Um, Paul, would you like to speak to the role as secretary? Uh oh, you're still muted. You know, why does this guy continue to run? <laughs> Everyone is asking. 
Well, I really believe I, I have something to give to, to the executive committee. Okay. Um, you know, with especially some of the zoning challenges coming up in the future, I just want to be where the action is. And, um, but when it comes to record keeping and that sort, um, you know, many people know, know that I work for CDC and I'm a statistician. So the idea of managing files is not a problem for, for me, given that I manage files of millions of records. So I, I would like to do a review of our document list. I, I recently created a, a zoning history for Ch Chosen Park, where every document, every zoning document over the last 20 years had, ha has been compiled. I would like to do that also for the um, uh, every neighborhood in, in MPUR. So when we want to look at the history of, of our zoning, we know what it is, as well as keeping the uh, monthly minutes. Is that all you would like to say, Paul? Well, I, I, I just think sometimes we have a problem where we were discussing something and we don't know what the document is, where we're actually looking at, or, or the history of those documents. So I have a history of doing that. I've already done it for one neighborhood. I'd like to do it for every neighborhood in, in, in MPUR. So, so we, when we discuss things, we, we know the total history. Thank you to our candidates for secretary. Um, we will now open the floor to voting um, first for Heather Graybill for the position of secretary. If you would like to vote for Heather, please raise your hand or press star nine. Okay, a few more seconds. Okay, I'll close the vote for Heather. I have a total of 25 votes, including one in the chat. Is that what, is that what you're seeing, uh, Mr. Chair? That is correct. Okay. We will now um, see. Okay, we will now open the vote for Paul McMurray for the position of secretary. If you would like to vote for Paul, please raise your hand now and press star nine if you're on the phone.
give it a couple more seconds. Okay, it looks like the voting has stopped, so I'll close the vote. I see um, four votes total. Okay, and um, so four votes total for Paul. We can go ahead and clear the votes and um, I'll ask if anyone would like to abstain from the vote of the position of secretary once the hands are cleared. And so far I see one vote to abstain. The hand went down. Okay. I'll close the vote for um, to abstain. And I see one hand, so that's one vote to abstain. Okay, so we will close the vote for secretary. We had for Heather Graybill, we had 25 votes. Um, for Paul McMurray, we had four votes and we had one vote to abstain. Okay, next up, um, we have secretary for membership. Two candidates are running for this position, Paul McMurray and Kelly Jean Lee. Um, we will start with Paul. And as soon as I get my timer up, um, Paul, whenever you're ready to speak, I'll press go. Uh oh, you're muted. Okay. Again, community. Um, I keep running because I want to be on the executive team. I think I made contributions for all the years I've, I've been on the executive committee. So that is why I wish to continue to continue. I think, you know, other officers every year would say, yes, I did do things that were helpful, but you didn't necessarily see them. So um, nothing else, just saying the procedure is this, it's not that you know, and, and so forth. So um, um, that's why I keep doing it. And I ho hope you find a reason to, to, to value that point of view. And Paul, you do have about a minute left if you wanted to speak to um, what you're going to do over the next year to enhance the NPU. I think I already sort of said that, but you know, I'm going to keep very good records of other recordings that, that, that the recording sector is supposed to do. What I would like to do is that you know you don't necessarily see this sometimes in the uh, day, day the month of meetings, but there are issues going on in in the city that, that are very important. What's coming up now is is zoning reform. And um, we have to discuss this in the executive co committee and give recommendations. Like Gloria was saying last year, there was an effort to um, basically try to uh, limit single family zone. And with my, uh, we, all, we all got together at, and we're part of an of a um, 20, 17, NP, 17 
MPUs got together and went down to 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 the ZRB and made a statement that we did not want uh, ZR twenty one seventy four, which would have, among other things, put uh, attached ADUs in the area ha have um, allowed the city uh, to not have minimum have developers not have minimum parking re requirements. So I was part of a group that we're, we're a little over time, but if you wanted to to wrap it up, that's what I, I, mean, I was part of that group who put together that letter and stated stated our opposition. And we ended up winning. Okay. But it could all come come back again with 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 zone, zoning reform. And that's going to start next November. Uh, well, at the, at the end of November. I just like to be part of the executive team so so we could um, uh, give MPUIs put position on that. Okay, thank you, Paul. We will move to um, Kelly Jean Lee, if you would like to speak to your role as secretary for membership. Hey, y'all. Um, I don't want to take up too much of everybody's time. We're at nine o'clock right now. Um, and I actually just got to my Airbnb um, because I, I'm on vacation. Um, but NPU stuff is important to me. I've been your um, secretary for attendance for the past year. I also served as Lakewood Heights parliamentarian three years in a row, and I was one of your many candidates for city council in district one. Um, and so I've been involved in the city and the neighborhood and the NPU for many years. Uh, I've been a Lakewood Heights resident since early 2016. So coming up on seven years now. Um, and I really value the work that we're doing to make sure our, our neighborhood is strong and thriving and our community is connected and all that jazz. So, uh, I don't, again, don't want to take up too much more of everybody's time. And uh, out of respect for that, I see any remaining time I have. Thank you, Kelly Jean. Okay, we will now um, open the votes, um, starting with Paul McMurray. If you would like to vote for Paul for secretary for membership, please raise your hand now. Press star nine if you're on the phone. About 10 more seconds. Okay, um, so that's four. Oops, so sorry. Four votes for Paul. Point of order. I believe it's five with Bob's second vote, but. Okay. So five votes for Paul. Okay, we will close that vote. And once the hands are cleared, move to the next candidate. Is there, okay. I just want to make sure we have all the hands cleared. Okay, thank you. Um, we will now move to, um, I'll open the votes for Kelly Jean Lee 
for secretary for membership. If you would like to vote for Kelly Jean, please raise your hand or press star nine. Okay, it looks like the votes have stopped coming in. I see, um, I see 20 votes total. Is that correct, Heather? Yep, you've got that correct. All right. We'll close the vote for Kelly Jean. That was 20 votes total. Um, and now, if you would like to abstain from the vote for secretary for membership, please raise your hand. Oh, once the once these hands are cleared, sorry about that. So I have several hands up. So once these clear, thank you. Um, if you would like to abstain um, from this vote for secretary for membership, please raise your hand now. looks like we have one vote to abstain. So I will close the vote for secretary for membership and read through the final tally. Um, Kelly Jean Lee had the most votes with 20 votes. Paul McMurray had five votes and there was one vote to abstain. Okay, moving on um, to the position of treasurer. Um, we have Jimmy Moore and Paul McMurray. Um, so first I will start with Jimmy Moore. Once I get my timer set up. So um, Jimmy Moore, if you would like to speak to uh, the role as treasurer. Absolutely. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Jimmy Moore. Uh, I've been in Atlanta for about uh, about 21 years. I've been a resident of Lakewood Heights for uh, going on 11 years. Um, I've been involved with Lakewood Heights and the MPU for probably about the past seven or eight years. Um, I'm a husband and dad. Uh, dad of two girls and uh, one son, one boy. So family and uh, community are very important to me. I've been uh, very involved uh, with the community, like I said, over the past uh, seven to eight years specifically, uh, once I found out about Lakewood Heights uh, uh, Community Association, I jumped, jumped in feet first and as well jumped in uh, with the MPU. Um, I served as treasurer for the past year so, um, you know, have that experience. Uh, I served on executive board for Lakewood Heights community. Um, I currently serve on the board for the Lakewood Amphitheater Community Finance Committee. I've been active with the South Bend Steward Stewardship Program to uh, rid the uh, park of invasive species and to uh, make our park uh, better. Um, I've also uh, been a member of the uh, education committee. Uh, sorry, Monique, I've missed the past two meetings. I've been chasing that son of mine around with uh, with basketball and martial arts, but um, I promise you I'll make the next meeting. Um, I'm also uh, been uh, coach for my son's basketball team for the past couple of years, so I'm a very uh, busy and involved dad, uh, very dedicated to uh, my community and my family. So 
Um, let's see. Um, what I would do to help enhance the MPUY, um, as Paul said, I would like to uh, deindustrialize the Jonesboro corridor. Um, as they, I believe there are too many trucks on Lakewood Terrace, uh, I'm sorry, Lakewood, uh, Lakewood uh, Way, um, Jonesboro, Clare, and Pryor. So I'd like to get the trucks uh, out of the uh, Jonesboro uh, cor uh, corridor if, if possible. Another thing is uh, I'd like to see some development of the, uh, the Lakewood Heights Triangle. Um, what I would like to do um, is make an effort to reach out to some of the owners of the um, commercial property in the uh, Jonesboro Lakewood corridor to see if they have any visions uh, for what they would like their properties to be. Um, do they need any help to try and maybe make those, uh, those properties habitable and usable, even if they're not gonna run themselves, maybe some, you know, make them so that somebody else could come and open a business, a eatery, you know, uh, something that can contribute to the Lakewood Triangle and make that area down there better. Um, I know we have some other problems uh, related to that triangle, but, you know, um, I definitely would like to see the triangle, um, you know, improve and, you know, be better for, for residents. So um, that's about all I have. I would be uh, uh, appreciative of your vote, um, but if you don't, I'm still gonna be involved. Uh, Paul is a great guy. He would be very capable, uh, very knowledgeable. So like I said, if you don't vote for me, it's okay. I'll still be involved. I won't take it personal, um, but uh, that's all for me. Thanks. Thank you. And Paul. Um... Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, Jimmy, uh, thank you. But uh, the, the same go, go, goes for you, the ultimate family man in Lakewood. And, and, and dealing with uh, these issues. But again, you know, I, you know, I think it's important uh, to be on the executive committee. I have the long view on things. Sometimes people don't see it. And uh, that's why I continue to run, although it looks like I'm, I'm not too successful, especially when I'm running against J Jimmy. I don't really even want to run against this guy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but um, that's the reason I'm running all the other things I've already said about, uh, about approving Lakewood. You know, um, you can have a lot of meetings on things, but if you don't know where you're going, it doesn't, it may not matter so much. So, but what I'm, what I like to bring is the long view of where we're going. Like when we're, talking about zoning reform in the next couple of months, are we going to get the proper information about that? Or are we just gonna back into what was being proposed at the end of 2021, which is Z2174, which, which would have attacked the single family core, would have imposed, we would have said there would have been no minimum parking requirements in R4 and R5 areas. And we know in Chosen Park, we're having a problem with, with, with that now. So if, if we aren't on top of zoning reform, we're gonna get the same thing at, um, in 2022 that we were getting at, at, at the end of, of um, 2021, you know. So I'm saying that because the, the advantage of being on the treasurer is that you're on the executive board. You don't have any money, you see. So that's why I'm running for this. Although I wish I wasn't running against Jimmy. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you both. Okay. We will now um, open the votes for treasurer. First, um, the vote is for Jimmy Moore for treasurer. If you would like to vote for Jimmy, please raise your hand or press star nine if you're on the phone.
I'll leave it open for about 10 more seconds. Okay, I am seeing um, 21 votes for um, Jimmy Moore. But uh, Troy or Heather, please correct me if you're seeing a different number on the back end. Uh, okay. Seeing the same. Same. I'm seeing the same as well, Gloria. Okay. So 21 votes for Jimmy Moore. And we will now move um, once the hands are cleared. We will move on um, to the next candidate. And I unfortunately cannot clear the hands automatically. There you go, thanks. Okay. Um, the next candidate is Paul McMurray for treasurer. If you would like to vote for Paul, please raise your hand or press star nine. I'll leave it open about 10 more seconds. Okay, I'm gonna tally the votes for Paul. I see one in the chat and four in Zoom, so five total. Okay, so the, the voting for the treasurer is closed and um, Jimmy Moore is the new treasurer. Oh, I need to vote to abstain, I'm sorry. Forgot to do that. Um, if you would like to abstain from um, voting for the treasurer position, once these hands are cleared, sorry. If you would like to vote to abstain um, from voting for the um, treasurer position, please raise your hand now. Okay, seeing none, I will close that vote and read the final tallies for treasurer. Um, Jimmy Moore had 21 votes. Um, Paul McMurray had five votes. And there were zero votes to abstain. Okay, we have two more positions. And it actually looks like the two remaining positions only have one candidate each. Um, so for parliamentarian, um, since Gloria Hawkins went as our new vice chair, um, the only candidate is Rebecca Robinson for parliamentarian. So Rebecca, if you would like to speak to this role. 
Um, sure. Um, I'm Rebecca Robinson. I've been active in the NPU and uh, community association since I moved here in 2017. I've served as the, for the past two years, I've served as the assistant secretary and secretary for the Lakewood Heights Community Association. And I've served as the park spotlight and beautification chair for at both the MPU and the community association level. So vote for me, vote, don't vote for the other guy, I guess. That's all I got. Thank you. Okay, we will take a vote for Rebecca Robinson for parliamentarian, and then we will take a vote for anyone who would like to abstain. So um, if you would like to vote in favor of Rebecca Robinson. Is it possible to ask a question? Yes, I think so. <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, what well, is your question? So, um, can you nominate somebody if there's only one person? Can you nominate a second person at this stage, or is it too late? I think it's too late um, that so there was a call for nominees at the beginning, but um, Mr. Gloria, Chair. But no, no I, absolutely. I'm the parliamentarian. I, I'm uncertain of the answer to the question. Maybe someone in the audience knows better. It just just a reasonable analysis is until there is a final declaration of winners, seems like anyone can be nominated. That's that's not coming directly from Robert's Rules of Order. Someone in the audience may know better. Um, so this is this actually depends on the presiding officer, what the presiding officer would want to do. Um, we could reopen the floor if the but the, Historically, if the floor is closed, it's closed. Um, but if the presiding officer wants to open the floor for nominations, then they can. So it's their decision. That is correct, President. So who who is up who to gets you, to Anna? That? It's up to Anna. She's the presiding officer at this point. Okay. Um, okay. Well, then in that case. Um, I will allow nominations for these last two positions where there's just one candidate. So we will clear um, clear the vote for now. And if there's an, a nomination for, I'm gonna go ahead and open the floor for the two remaining positions, parliamentarian and sergeant at arms. If you would like to make a nomination for um, either one of those positions, please raise your hand and I'll call on you. Madam facilitator, there are two hands raised. There are three hands raised. Okay. And, and I would suggest, uh, I would suggest stating the current slate uh, for those two positions if you have that information in front of you. So currently for parliamentarian, we have one candidate, Rebecca Robinson. And then for Sergeant at Arms, we have one candidate, Bob Morris. And I see there are two hands raised. So um, first I see Bob Morris. Um, Bob, would you like to um, nominate someone for one of these positions? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good. This is Suzanne. Uh, I'm on Bob's phone. Okay. Um, I was going to add Paul Murray to the parliamentarian. Paul McMurray has, has tried as hard as he could to get on the executive committee. But now <laughs> I'm going to give up. I right value. Now. So you know, I value you, you, you the had history your before to vote me in, and you didn't do it. So I'm Paul, not going to be parliamentarian. Paul, right. I appreciate your history and your dedication for thirty years to this neighborhood. So even if I didn't vote before, I vote for you now. Well, so I nominate not, Paul for parliamentarian. I just to get accept, him on the executive. I did not accept that. Okay. I, I tried okay. on, the, uh, on what I thought was important. I stated it. He didn't vote for me. Okay. 
cut. We, we have to stop at some point. You know. So that is uh, withdrawn. So then. To Anna, that is not uh, withdrawn from the request of the candidate. To nominate Paul. Okay, understood. Um, are there, I don't see any, any other hands at the moment um, for a nomination. So I'm just gonna ask one more time if anyone else would like to nominate someone for parliamentarian or sergeant at arms. Let me know if you have any questions, please. Okay. I don't see any hands um, or anything in the chat. So we will go back to the vote for um, Rebecca Robinson for parliamentarian. So I'm gonna reopen the vote for Rebecca Robinson for parliamentarian. If you would like to vote for Rebecca, please raise your hand now or press star nine if you're on your phone. Uh, Madam Facilitator, point of order. Yes. Do you believe that the rules require a second vote in light of the fact that there's been nothing to negate the earlier vote? No, I just didn't um, tally the total the the total hands raised. It was kind of we paused in the middle of it, so I felt like we should do another vote since. That's correct. Okay. It looks like the votes have stopped coming in, but I will give about five or 10 more seconds. You haven't made your vote for Rebecca Robinson for parliamentarian. I'm seeing 17 votes at this time, 18. A couple more coming in. Please take a look at the chat at this time. Yes, there was um, a request to approve the remaining two candidates without opposition. Um, I don't have a problem with that. I'm not sure if we need to state a vote. Um, if, if in the past, what you all have done when there's just one candidate, um, and I was yeah. also going to take a vote for anyone who wanted to abstain since we also had that request earlier. But uh, Troy, what what do you usually? So in the past, do? we have done that on the slate. We have done a slate. Um, if somebody would motion, well, we in the middle of a vote now, so we have to close the vote. Okay. Um, but we can just close this vote, and then now it's just <laughs> it, it doesn't matter anymore because one. Yeah. More yeah. Okay, we're going to close this vote. And um, make if someone would um, make a motion to approve the remaining two candidates, Rebecca Robinson for parliamentarian and Bob Mor Morris for sergeant at arms, who are um, unopposed in these positions. Let's do a call from the floor for that last position first. Madam Facilitator, I think we're in the middle of tabulating the votes for the parliamentarian, which is one of the two that are remaining. So, so we, so- uh, Parliamentarian, I have 20 votes for- as a, Yeah, as a point of order, we, we have to go ahead and tally the votes because it's the, the voting has started. We'll close and then um, solicit a motion or just go ahead and do it last vote. Okay. So we will close the vote. So there were 20 votes for Rebecca Robinson. Is that correct? That's what you had as well, Heather? Yep, that's correct. That's correct. So the vote for parliamentarian is closed. And then, um, correct me if I'm wrong, my understanding is that you would like to move forward with 
the final candidate, I, I did hear a request to open the floor again for a nomination for Sergeant at Arms. But I've also seen a request to approve that um, position. So, um, Madam Chair, point of order, I believe both are appropriate under the circumstances that I, in fact, I would have argued that each, each office concurrent with those who were listed as known candidates that each time there should have been uh, a request for nominations from the floor. But I think we've already kind of ruled on the last candidate uh, just by voice vote. Okay. Good point. I recant, I, I recant my statement. So for the, the last position, we will just move forward without a formal vote. Yes. Okay. And do um do you need to make a motion for that for the for the record? So go we can go ahead and approve the last candidate. If the, uh, unless somebody wants to make a motion. I think Chris was poised to make a vote that we accept the last candidate by voice vote and that there is no opposition. Is that right, Chris? That is correct. Nicole Weiswasser will second that. All right. So Anna, you we have to do a vote vote. Vote. Voice vote. <laughs> voice the voice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um since there was no opposition um for um the sergeant at arms position for Bob Morris. Um Madam Facilitator, I think you have to raise the question. You have to ask if there oh, are sorry. if there is if there are any in opposition to uh, yeah. Okay. There, yeah. Um so for the position, Sergeant at Arms, are there any in opposition to um voting for the current candidate Bob Morris? If you are in opposition to um voting for the only candidate. Bob Morris for this position, please raise your hand or please speak. I'm not hearing anyone in opposition to moving forward with the approval of the candidate for Sergeant at Arms, Bob Morris. So um, with that, uh, Bob Morris did receive the vote for Sergeant at Arms position. Yeah. And for the record, we'll mark that as unanimous consent. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that concludes um, the executive office elections. Um, but Troy, if there's anything that I missed, please let me know. But I don't see anything else in um, in our notes for this. Yep, that's it. Um, I'd like to take back over presiding officer. Oh, well, <laughs> with Nicole and your permission. <laughs> You're, yeah, you have permissions, Troy. <laughs> right, thank you. Um, <laughs> so the last piece is the, did you have anything, Anna, for, um, for any notes for the city of Atlanta? For the planner notes? I do have a couple of important announcements and um, I think I already put it in the chat, but I'll, I'll throw it up there again. Um, through this link. Okay, I just put the link in the chat where um, the Department of City Planning continuously updates various projects and initiatives that are going on. So a couple of key highlights for November and early December, 
Um, NPU University offers free courses in community leadership, planning, and civic participation. Um, coming up in the end of November, we have the session Density Matters and Neighborhood Revitalization on Wednesday, November 30th. To register for this course or any other NPU University courses, please see the link in the chat. Um, second, the information session for the 2023 Community Impact Grant will be held on Wednesday, December 14th from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. via Zoom. This mandatory session is required for the project manager or chairperson of all NPUs who will apply for funding to complete impactful community projects in 2023. To qualify, NPUs must have successfully closed out any previous year grant awards. Applications will be due February 28th, 2023. The Office of Zoning and Development is launching its first focus workshop, Zoning Diagnostic and Citywide Alternatives on Tuesday, November 29th at 6.30 p.m. at the Habitat for Humanity headquarters located at 824 Memorial Drive Southeast. That's all I have. And then um, I posted the link in the chat where you can get more information about those updates and other ones as well. Thank you, Anna. If there's Thank any you. questions, let me know or send me an email. All right. Um, so two things. Thank you. Thank you, Anna, for, for that. Uh, mm -hmm. Two things. First one is I appreciate everybody and allowing me to be a leader of the MPU system of MPUI. It has been an absolute pleasure to work with the leaders, work with the city, work with stakeholders and partners. Uh, it's taught me a lot and I've learned a lot. And I look forward to continue working with you all as for my as a advisory role, <laughs> just helping out here and there. Um, and my goal when I first started the MPU as chairperson was to make tomorrow better than it was yesterday. That was my goal. Try to enhance, try to make the MPU better as a whole. And I feel like together we have done that. And I appreciate everybody who has supported the MPU and supported me as a chair. And I appreciate you all for that. Um, next steps um, by bylaws. Nicole is officially the chair moving forward. She, at the point of voting, she becomes the chair. Uh, so we would start the process of doing a transitionary period for all newly elected officials and old ones who have got new positions. Uh, we'll start a trans transitionary period over the next month and a half to make sure that you all have the adequate knowledge to continue to make the MPU successful. So um, we appreciate everything that you want to do, everything that you're doing forward, moving forward as an MPU, and I appreciate everybody's service on the call. With that being said, uh, Nicole, did you want to go ahead and close out? Mm -hmm. Yeah, first, I just want to thank everybody that was on the board last year. Uh, we made some great strides in MPU, and I hope that we can do some more this year as well. Troy, thank you so much for the guidance that you give me throughout the year. Um, I look forward to your assistance uh, as we move forward to transfer over. So if anybody likes to make any comments about any announcements for their communities, please uh, raise your hand to have the floor. Gloria, you have the floor. Yeah, I just saw a lovely note from Tina and it was just really heartfelt, said that present with us tonight and probably unlike any other time were all the last four MPU chairs, Troy, Chris, Russell, and Paul. And I thought that was pretty neat that she announced that. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, it is. It is amazing. It's history, isn't it? It is. It shows that we're uh, sticking to it here in MPUI. Yeah, it does. Ken, you have the floor. Yes, I just want to say thank you to all of the officers that uh, that were involved with uh, all the great work that has taken place with the MPUI in the past year. And I'm really excited about uh, the new leadership moving forward. Uh, all of you seem so energetic and passionate about uh, what you are bringing to the table. 
And uh, I'm just grateful that I've had the pleasure of building relationships with all of you. So, you know, you have my uh, unrelenting support. Thank you, Kenneth. And we look forward to the continuing support. Monique, you have the floor. Is this just a regular announcement section. I just want to. It is. Go right ahead. Oh, well, I, I mean, I will definitely say kudos to my husband, Troy. Um, I do think he did a phenomenal job alongside his amazing executive team. And I have seen a lot of growth and change and a different um, sense of um, respect, I guess, as I tell my husband, put some respect on MPUY's name. Uh, we were one of three to even do the hybrid method uh, with our uh, Zoom and in person in all of the MPU system. Um, a lot of the resource and development that's coming to our area and uh, really people having to connect in with our executive team and our community. And they really are um, taking, us, taking us more seriously than I recall when I first got here. Um, and we're really being a vocal leader in the transition as our community is changing. So I do think our leadership has really impacted how we are perceived in the broader city of Atlanta landscape. So kudos to all the leaders. Um, and I will always share um, the PTA at Slater, the president, um, he recently had open heart surgery um, and has fallen on hard times. So you might, um, he is a landscaper um, and open heart surgery doesn't lend itself to that. Um, and the PTA is holding a um, canned food drive. So I will send out the link to how you can donate canned foods um, to 75 plant families, but also how you can support the PTA president at Slater, who's um, a really great human, um, enjoy land. And I love him dearly. I just picked him up from the hospital, um, some routine checks, but he had open heart surgery. And I really would love for our MPU to share some love with him. So you'll get an email from me about how to support um, our fellow MPU white person. He's awesome. Thank wow. you. And we'll definitely share that over social media as well. So that way other members that aren't here are able to show their support as well. Do I have any other hands? Troy, you're called to the floor. Yep. Um, I appreciate the love from everybody. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate everybody's uh, support. I have a couple of items I just shared my screen. This was shared to me by the Fulton County Library System, which is the Lewis Watley Southeast Library that's on Long Prior Road in MPY. They're doing a coat drive hmm. to uh, give away coats. So if you have any donations, please stop by there. Also, they have sponsored Child in Need. So if you have any uh, donation drop-offs, it's from November 28th through December the 20th. And I think that is, oh, one more thing. They have a neighborhood ballet going on mm -hmm. Tuesday, December the 6th. So they're going to bring in Atlanta's Young Dancers to do a holiday classic um, at the library. So it was, it's exciting to see the library reaching out to us and, and um, showing some love and then giving us a couple of events to go to. Or is that free Nunley up to the right uh, years ahead? <laughs> no. Yeah, maybe so. <laughs> maybe so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If I don't have any other hands raised, um, I'm going to put my information in the chat for everybody. Um, I know that some people have a different email for me from previously. However, that is my work email. So I expect many emails from our members um, within MPUI, so we'll be using my personal email from now on. I also throw my phone number on there. I'm always available by text or shoot me a call. I'll try to call you back as soon as possible. Um, if we have no other hands raised, um, I believe the MPU zone room five is Troy, correct? Yes, it is, Nicole. So if we have no hands raised, I'll go ahead and adjourn at 9.43. I know it's late, so let's get some food and start our day tomorrow. Yeah, let's conclude it with a voice vote. Uh, oh, our... yes, please. Thank you. <laughs> um, do you have Just a motion to adjourn? All in favor, say aye. 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 Have a good night. Good meeting. Good meeting. I'll good night, night, of that one. <laughs> good night, and thank you. Congratulations. Good night, everybody. Congratulations.